but get in the pool and get ready for your swim if you're a beginner swimmer. So first of all, you can see I'm at the end of my lane. We're at a wide open pool. It's public swim right now. You want to make sure that you're choosing a lane that is not too crowded and maybe it's your skill level. So some pools have a beginner lane all the way up to a faster lane. Talk to your lifeguards and the pool manager to make sure that you're in the right space. Next, you'll see I have my swim cap on, my goggles, my suit. Uh, sometimes people wear shoes, but I've left all my gear at the end of my lane. The reason for this is because in the middle of my workout, I don't want to have to jump out and go grab my stuff in my bag. So, I chose my lane, I have my goggles on, and I'm going to make sure I understand where the pace clock is. In most pools, there's a pace clock. And if you can see it from your lane, that's great. Some people, you might need glasses, or if you have a smartwatch with my SimPro app, you can track all your, your times on your wrist. These are backstroke flags. At every pool, there are backstroke flags. Typically, they're about five meters away from the wall. And there's also corresponding lane lines. As you can see, at the five meter line, they fade to it a uh, solid color, so you can see where the backstroke flags are. The most important thing, for these flags is it's going to tell you where you are in relation to the wall. Perfect for backstroke or kicking drills. So when you're on your back, you want to make sure you are aware of where the flags are so that you don't hit your head and run into the wall. We call this a stroke count. So when you reach the flags, you're going to train yourself to learn how many strokes it takes for you to get into the wall and touch it safely without hitting your head. Now, you'll also notice that once you hit this mark, there's a black line down the middle of the pool, and there's also this T-shape. The T-shape is going to tell you once you're around two meters from the edge of the wall. Make sure that every pool that you go to, you look around for all these elements and make sure that they're normal to you and you're aware of how far away they are so you don't get hurt. So once you reach that T-mark, it's basically your cue that you're coming to the wall, you don't want to get hurt. Also, on the edge of the wall, there's another T. That's going to tell you where the middle of the lane is and where the wall is. So just make sure you're aware of where all these elements are so that you don't get hurt and you can practice safe swimming. Once I get to the, the front of my lane, typically you kind of want to stretch out. You'll see a lot of people stay in here, warm up, and just get acclimated to the water. It's going to be cold at first. That doesn't mean you need to jump in and sprint right away. So make sure you understand how deep the water is. A lot of pools don't let you dive. So it's best to like slowly get in the water. If you want, you can sit down, get your feet in, it's cold. <laughs> and you're just gonna slowly get in. If you're a little bit uncomfortable in the water, we recommend that you are always holding on to the side and get comfortable breathing and floating, which we're gonna show you in a minute. So you're gonna slowly get in. It's a little cold, so I'm not quite ready to swim, all right? I'm gonna put my goggles on so I can get used to what it feels like to have my goggles on and see what it's like underwater and make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. So if someone is sharing a lane with you, you're going to wanna to do something called circle swim. That means that you're always gonna swim on the right side of the lane so that everyone's rotating in a counterclockwise direction. If there's someone in your lane coming your way and you're about to get in the water, just hop in and scoot over to the side either on this corner or that corner, but just give them some room. So, once you're in the water, what we recommend is just get used to the water, get warm. If you want, you can hold on to the side and dip your face underwater. Get used to blowing bubbles in and out of your nose and your mouth. And here you can practice breathing forward or breathing on your side. Now once your face is a little more comfortable, you can get a feel for uh, floating. So, holding onto the wall, I'm gonna practice just gliding on my bad. side. Keep your other arm straight and extended. And practice just kind of holding yourself against the wall. You can see with my feet, they're pressed up against the wall. I don't know if you can see, but they're not on the top of the wall. They're not all the way on the bottom. They're about right in the middle. So what this is gonna do is give me control to push off the wall when I'm ready to swim. So practice keeping your feet on the wall, hold yourself here, and then you want to put your arms out and pull a sideways motion like this. This is going to 
going to help you keep your head above the water. Now, once you're here, my feet are on the wall because I'm practicing. Or you can rest if you really need some help. Put your feet up. And you're just going to practice dipping your head. You can see my arms are scrolling like this. Now, once you're warmed up and you're ready to go, we're going to teach you how to push off the wall. Usually you want to face to the side, but that is the most efficient way to glide through the water. So, keep one arm here, put your feet up on the wall, and then you're going to push off. If you're a beginner, you can also do this where you put both hands here, if that makes you feel more comfortable. And then you're going to dip off underwater, put your arms above your head in a streamlined position like this, and push off. Now you want to make sure you're not pushing off the top of the water, nor are you uh, pushing off towards the, the floor, so you hit the floor. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go on my side. My left arm is out. I'm scrolling underwater. I'm going to dip underwater and go in a streamlined position. Now we're going to show you a really great breathing drill for beginners. This is going to help you get used to what it feels like to float, flutter kick, and breathe on your side. So, you're going to go to the edge of the pool, grasp on with your right hand, and put your body on top of the water. You're going to flutter kick with your legs, small kicks, and keep your head almost straight down to the bottom of the pool. Then, after you do 10 kicks, you're going to rotate your body like you're on a skewer. And you're just going to rotate perfectly straight and breathe on your side. Make sure to keep one eye in the water and breathe with your mouth. You might have to like this kind of motion, so tilt your mouth open, and then you can dip your head back in, do another 10 kicks. Here we go. water up your nose and feeling uncomfortable. You also want to make sure your mouth is actually closed underwater. Purse your lips and breathe like strong bubbles. <laughs> Next we're going to talk about how to float on your back if you're kicking or doing backstroke. So this is for beginners and you want to make sure that you're more comfortable breathing and floating on the surface. An important thing you want to remember is where your chin is. So when you're floating you don't want to tuck your chin in because it's going to make you sink. So, be comfortable getting your body on the surface of the water and your chin is a little bit up. Now what I'm doing is I'm using my core and my ab muscles to keep my body in a, a stable position. Now if you want to float, take some deep breaths and you can subtly use your legs to kick. You can also use your arms back and forth to help you scroll and keep you on top of the water. Now once you're comfortable doing this, you can use the same body position for kick drills or backstroke. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to come into the wall in a slow float and push off on your back. So practice here and kicking. I'm gonna reach behind me, flip over. Once you're ready to swim, we're gonna practice the Superman. Dip underwater, put your hands in front of you and try to keep your body as straight as you can. And you're gonna push off the wall and practice keeping your head underwater. All right, here we go. Once you're comfortable with the Superman move, you want to gradually get your body more into a streamlined position. It means overlapping your hands, pushing your elbows against your head, and you're going to reach as straight as you can. You can see I'm not hunched over, I'm not going backwards, I'm straight up. Now, once you push off the wall, you want to incorporate your legs with a subtle flutter kick. What this is going to do is let you streamline under the water, move really fast, and once you're floating towards the top, then you'll start your stroke. Here's how it's done. This is a 
a pole buoy. This is a really great tool for keeping your legs floating on top of the water. You're going to place it in your upper thighs in between your legs. And you're going to squeeze your legs so that it stays in place. You can swim with it any stroke and you can always do a flip turn with it. Just make sure you squeeze it in place so it doesn't fall out. These are paddles. They're a really great tool for building strength and helping with your feel of the water. If you're just getting started, we recommend starting with smaller paddles that are not much bigger than your hands. To put them on, you're going to slide your middle finger through the little loop. This is an L for my left hand. So for my right hand, I'm going to slide my finger all the way through and make sure it's snug. You can pull these cords to tighten it and loosen it. The important thing with paddles is you want to do your regular freestyle stroke, but focus on your early vertical forearm. So what that means is you're going to stroke with this side down and focus on keeping your fingertips first, reaching, and then pointing down to the bottom of the pool for that early vertical forearm. This is going to give you a lot of strength and it's a great tool for feeling really strong in the water.